goes praying for somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Holy Ghost said that's finished. That's done. It's done. You lift your hands and praise and that's over with. That battle's over. That battle's over with. Y'all can't see her around here, but somebody's getting set free of me. Hallelujah! Praise God. Look at somebody beside you, y'all over here, and say, You may not can see what God's doing. He's working. Some of y'all in your own life, you're looking around thinking, God, where you at? He's about to snatch the curtain open and stand up on the stage of your faith and say, Here's what I've been working on the whole time. Give up on him now. Yeah. Glory to you, Jesus. Yeah. I'm telling you, God's in this room. Yeah. Look at somebody and tell them, say, if you ain't shouted at least 15 times, you need to catch up. Worship your Lord. You know, I hear the Lord also say to you, if I get strangers that I would speak. After this man. Yes. You know Luke 5 and 1 said they pressed upon him to hear his words. And he stood by the sea of Gethsemane. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And that's where he said in verses 4 he told he told Peter after he left speaking. He said launch out in the deep and let down your net for a catch. Amen. And he didn't close so much fish. Woo. Now Peter was a fisherman by trade. He was the bill dance of his day. But he had done hung his net up. Thank you sister. He had done hung his net up for dry. He done quit and gave up. He said, I've told all night, I've caught nothing. Hallelujah. But one word from the Master. He said, Lord, nevertheless. Somebody say, nevertheless. At your word, I'll let down my net. And he did. He couldn't even pull all the fish in. He had to call for partners, people out there to come and help him. And Peter followed Jesus for three years off of the prophet of that catch. Wow. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, just one word will change everything. All you need is one word from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came to get, but I come to get what he said. Amen. I found out something about the Lord. When he gets ready to do miracles or do anything, amen, for supernatural, he always speaks first. Somebody say, God speaks. I've heard people that's had wordless moves. I remember I went to a church one time. And for six months, the pastor, when I, when I walked in, this was his testimony. He said, we've been having church around here. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, I ain't preached in six months. I thought, brother, what kind of church you been having? Anybody breathing? Breathing. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't mean you can come into service and everything, have a text and title and be laid out. Come on, somebody. If I were a sermon, you won't hear one of those tonight because oh, here's my notes. That's what I've been telling you. Amen. Hallelujah. But God's going to speak when He comes. Amen. Come on. I said, God's going to speak when He comes. Amen. And uh, anyhow, man, I was shocked when He was telling me this because I was looking off into the corner of the choir up in the left-hand corner. And I dreamed of that very structure, that very choir uh, area that I had never been in, but God showed it to me the night before in a dream. And in the dream, I saw a demon up there in the left corner. Amen. And uh, that's usually where demons try to manifest first in the church anyhow, in the music department. And more confusion comes in there than anywhere. Hello. And, but anyhow, when, when I looked up there and I, the pastor was talking to me about how great service he's having and why he was telling me he'd cough every now and then. And I kept looking in that corner of that church up there, up there in that corner. I said, oh God. And uh, I said, Lord, this is the church you showed me in the dream last night. And when the pastor asked me to come up and preach that night. He called me up, rather. When I got up behind the pulpit, I just ignored the people and everybody, even him. And I just turned around from the pulpit and looked up there in the corner uh, of that choir, and I said, you devil, you've been sent here to steal the Word of God, but you won't steal it tonight. I said, 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3 says, the Word of the Lord will have free course. Amen. And I preach that night like I usually do, with a gust of 100, come on, somebody on fire, and one looking for a water hole for about an hour. Not counting all the service. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Now I remember some of them saying, man, we had this kind of preaching and I was wanting to say six months. At least six months. Come on. Man, they was dying. 
Amen. And I had a I had a word of knowledge at the end of the service during the altar service. I said, "There's a man here. You call it God's on you, but every time you try to do what God's called you to do, I said you have some kind of feel like some kind of a stru- obstruction or something going on in your throat, and you can't talk. It, it, it tries to hinder you when you talk. Guess who come at all? The preacher. The pastor. I laid hands on him. He hit the floor, screaming, speaking in tongues. Didn't sound like he had no obstruction there. Come on, somebody. I came back a few months later, and I sit on the front pew for about an hour while he preached. He went up to introduce me and tell me to come, and he preached for an hour. It wouldn't bother me. It won't be. I was like, Lord, the man's got a lot of catching up to do. Hello? Amen? The devil don't care if you shout. He don't care if you scream, dance, spin around. Come on, somebody. Run the aisles, run the walls, run out the door. It don't make no difference. Glory to God. He don't want you to hear the Word of God. Amen. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Amen. Psalm chapter 119, the Bible said in 171, the Bible said, Let my lips praise you when you've taught me your statutes. In other words, David said, My shout shall until I know what God's Word says. Amen. Amen. Matthew 22 and 29, the Bible said in the Word of the Lord, I love this scripture, He talks about the power of God. Amen. And He talks about how God's power is connected to His Word. Somebody say, God's power is connected to His Word. In Luke 4, verses 32, the Bible said they were astonished at His doctrine or with his, uh, at His Word because His Word was with power. Somebody say, His Word is with power. Amen. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, For the Word of God's quick. That don't mean hurry up and get through, preacher. That means it has reviving, raising from the dead power. The Word of God is quick. Amen. Powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even the dividing of the sun of the soul and spirit and joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the intents and thoughts of the heart. Somebody shout his word. Yeah. So look at your neighbor tonight. Say word up. Word up. Amen. Amen.